We're about to get a demo of the Skull and Shackles Pathfinder Adventure card game from Brian Campbell. Thanks, Brian. All right. <laughs> You're quite welcome. So this is Skull and Shackles. It's the uh, second set for the Pathfinder Adventure card game. Um, this is going to be out in time for Gen Con. Um, we also have uh, the first set out sitting over there. It's called Rise of the Rune Lords. And uh, each set has a story that leads you from a beginning character to a uh, far more experienced character. Um, we have here uh, four characters to choose from. Uh, as, like, as with the role-playing game, uh, you get to choose your character and we choose a scenario and just jump right in. So I've got four choices for you. The first one is Valoros. Uh, he's a human fighter. He's a very straightforward kind of guy. The second one is Lem. He's a bard. Uh, he is... It works well with other people. He's good at helping other people. He dabbles in a little bit of everything. The next one we have is Jarell, the Pirate Queen. She's a swashbuckler. And then the last one is Lirianne, the Gunslinger. And uh, this is a pirate-themed game. So not only do we have a Pirate Queen, um, but uh, Lirianne has a lot of black powder weapons, which is something new in this game. So uh, you get to choose who you want to play. Totally up to you. Well, since I got Juriel here, I'll just take Juriel. Yeah, I got Leary in, and she seems pretty rad, so I'm going to hold on to okay. Leary in. I'll stick with Lem. You are Lem, the bard, and I, once again, shall assume the role of <laughs> Valoros. <laughs> All right. So uh, the scenario that we're doing is called Island Hopping. Uh, when I'm setting up the game, this tells me some things I need to set up. So, for instance, this lists the uh, big bags that are part of the story, the villain and the henchman. Uh, this is some game text that uh, uh, fires off while the story is taking place. And at the end, if we're playing the campaign game, if we win, and I hope we do, uh, we get a reward. Okay, and that's all persistent, so next time you play... Yep. Yeah. Uh, as you play through the campaign, uh, you acquire boons, uh, you get more cards, uh, you get feats that you can use to get powers and skills. Your character becomes more powerful so you can take on bigger challenges. Okay. The back of this card... Uh, tells me the uh, locations that are part of the story. Because this is a demo version of the game, I'm just going to run with these four locations. I've run for one person, I've run for three people, I've run for four people. But for, for now, it's just the four of us with these locations. And because uh, this is based on the RPG, we have story. And because we have story, we have cheesy flavor text. And I am now going to dramatically read this <laughs> cheesy flavor text for Excellent. you. Nice. Now, I'm going to give you a choice here. On a scale of 1 to 10, how piratical do you want my reading to be? Oh, let's just go all the way. You want yeah. maximum pirate here? Yeah. Okay. Come on, man. Here you go. Har! <laughs> There's booty ahead, if you're bold enough to seize it. A merchantman's vessel is ready for the taking, but an enemy ship prowls nearby. Its captain is an Ardaro barbarian, a tyrant. <laughs> who would just as soon feed you to the sharks. Maybe you should make him their new chum. Thank you very much. I'll be here all weekend. <laughs> all right. So that's the story that we're doing. Uh, as the man said, um, uh, we're trying to find an Adaro barbarian. He is the villain of this piece. So while we play the game, what we're going to do is we're going to explore these different locations. Along the way, we're going to find some cards that might help us. They're called boons. And we're going to find some cards that might hurt us. They're called banes. And the biggest and the baddest of the banes is the villain. What we want to do is track him down, corner him so he can't escape, and defeat him. And if we can do all that before time runs out, we win. All right. This is the blessing deck right here. This is kind of our timer for the game. At the start of each turn, we're going to turn over one of these cards. If we ever get to the point where we need to turn over a blessing card and we can't, game over. we lose. Okay. And also, each of you has a character deck. If you ever get to the point where you need to, to draw a card from your character deck and you can't, your character has died. No. Now, do these, these are face down? These are face down. Okay. Sorry. I had mine face no down. No worries. And uh, it is possible for a character to die and the, and the party to still win. Um, if we're playing the, the campaign game, uh, everyone who survives, if we win, uh, we get rewards for doing it um, and then become more powerful over time. Um, if your character dies as part of the campaign, you need to start over with a basic character uh, and race to catch up. So uh, it'll be a bit of a struggle after that, but you'll be back up to speed in no time. So um, 
This is what we've got. We also have token cards. This represents uh, where you're, which location your character is at. If you want to use some of our pawns or if you want to use minis or whatever, uh, you can use those as well. Um, be again, because this is based on a role-playing game, we have story. Uh, if you're an RP kind of character, uh, your character has a backstory on the back of his card. If you're that kind of player. So I'm going to choose a starting location for my character. I'm going to start off at the Fog Bank. You can pretty much start off anywhere at the beginning of the game, although I will caution you, if you start off at Shark Island, you're going to be fighting sharks. It's called Shark Island for, for a reason. reason. <laughs> yes. So uh, go ahead and pick a location and put down your character. You can always move later. Now, can we all be, can we be in the same Multiple location? Multiple characters can be okay. at the same location. Some characters like to work with others. Some characters are kind of loners and like to work on their own. I'm going to go to a Lonely Island. All right, you're the loner type. I think part <laughs> of the reason why you're the loner type is you've got a power on your card that says you may shuffle a card from your hand into your deck to add 1d4 to any combat check at another location. Oh, all this right. means Lyrian is so awesome that while she's at the Lonely Island, she can fire a shot all the way over to something at Shark Island and That's hit rad. it. That's rad. That's how like awesome it. you are. Um, also, now Lem, on the other hand, he works with others, I assume. He says, uh, you may recharge a card to add 1d4 to any check by a character at your location. So Lem can certainly work on his own because he dabbles in a little bit of everything, but uh, it's uh, kind of advantageous for Lem to work with others. He's a people person. I'm going to go over here. All right, we're going to team closest. up with the Fog Bank. All right, we'll team up like with the Lonely Island. Feeling. All right, there's some text on these cards that's good to know about. Um, the first thing says, at this location. Uh, this applies when you're at this location. So this says, if you're the only character at this location, add 1d4 to checks attempted at this location. Um, if you were here on your own, you'd get a, a d4 on your checks. However, you'd get a d4 anyway because you've got Lem here with you. So you'd get this instead. All right, uh, the second thing is when closing. This is what you need to do to close the location. And the third thing is when permanently closed, what happens when you succeed at closing the location. The reason this is important is, in the short term, we want to close locations. Because when we find the villain, he's a bit of a coward. When we find him, he's going to make a run for it. And if there's another open location, uh, he's going to flee. Okay. So what we want to do is close down every location that doesn't have the villain in it. And if we can do that and defeat him before time runs out, we win. Cool. So the best way for me to show you how to play, well, actually, I skipped a step. I'm going to show you about characters. The best way for me to show how to play is just to jump in and play it, which I will do right after I explain how characters work. So uh, here we have a character sheet. The first section here is called skills. Uh, there are some skills that every character has, things like strength, dexterity, constitution. In the role-playing game, there's a distinction between abilities and skills, but this is not the role-playing game, it's the card game. We call these all skills. Um, you'll see a number next to the skill. The bigger that number is, the better you are at it. Uh, the, so, for instance, Valorous is a fighter. He uses strength a lot. His strength is a D10, so if he's going to make a strength check, he starts out with a D10. There are also some skills that are derived from skills. How's it going, guys? Um, we have some skills that are derived from skills. So, for example, uh, Valorous has the melee skill. It's equal to his strength plus three. So if he's going to make a melee check, he starts out with a d10, and then he adds three to it. And then there are ways to improve his chances. Uh, the next section we have here is powers. The very first one is hand size. That number farthest to the left is your starting hand size. You may notice that on this card, there are some uh, traits that have uh, empty boxes next to them. If we were playing the campaign version of the game, over time you would get skill feats and power feats, things like that, that allow you to check off uh, boxes and become more powerful. But for now, it's just a one-shot. It's the demo. So we're going to just start off with your starting hand size. Then we have proficiencies, uh, kind of like uh, RPG characters. Um, some characters are good with weapons. Some of them aren't. Some characters are good with different types of armors. Uh, if you've got a trait under proficiencies that doesn't have an empty box next to it, you start with that trait. And then finally, we have some special powers down here. You can think of them kind of like class features if you want. These are things that you are especially good at, like Lyrian uh, firing off a shot from the other side of the table or uh, Lem helping others. Okay, so um, you now know everything about a character card that you need to know. 
Um, I'm gonna, except for one more thing, I'm gonna show you on the back of this card, we're gonna see, it's something called favorite card type. Everyone has a particular specialty. Uh, for instance, I'm playing the fighter. It would be kind of sad if I started out the game without a weapon. So um, this is a car type of card that you want to get in your starting hand. For Lem, you've got something extra special. You get to choose any type of card. So you'll see a listing of different cards types there. Oh, weapon, spell, armor, item, ally, blessing. Um, because you're a bard, you're good at a little bit of everything. So how about you go ahead and pick one of those types you think is important to you. Like if you want to fight a lot, you choose weapon. If you want to do spell casting, you say spell. Spell. All right, you like spells. Yes. Let's go ahead and draw our starting hand. So it'll say oh. all four. That's right. You get four, you get five. Okay. Um, I didn't get a weapon. I'm going to mulligan and mulligan and draw it. Okay, I've got a weapon. Uh, I'm going to play with an open hand so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Do you have a spell? Indeed you do, sir. And oh, yeah, so there's no reason not to have them open anyways, though, because we're not playing against each other. Because it's a cooperative game, sometimes it's helpful to see what other people are yeah. doing, especially in a demo. Um, some people like to play with a closed hand, even in a demo, because they want to be really dramatic when they pull out the one card. No one knows you had that saves everyone and saves the day. We are doing demos for Skull and Shackles, uh, Pathfinder Adventure Card Game, all weekend, back to back. Alright, so I've got my starting hand. And we are going to dive right in. We are setting sail. All right. So uh, I'm going to turn over. So the first thing that I do on my turn is turn over the top card of the blessing deck. It has some text in it. It's that's not going to be in play right just yet. So I'll explain how that works when it comes up. This just tells us it's turn one. I'm going to point this card at myself. Sometimes people. Uh, forget to turn over the blessing card. So this says, yes, Brian, you did do that thing that you were supposed to do. You turned over the blessing card. Good job. All right. The next thing that we do is, if I'm at the same location as another character, I have the option of giving a card to that character. So, for instance, if you didn't have any weapons over there, and I'm the fighter, and, oh, my God, I have so many weapons, um, I could hand one of them to you. But I like my hand right now, and I also want to keep all my weapons. So because that's the kind of guy I am. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay with my hand right here. The next step is to move. Um, unless a card says otherwise, you can uh, move to any location. Uh, for instance, if I decided, no, really, I want to go over to Shark Island right now, I changed my mind, um, I could do that. I don't want to go to Shark Island right now. I want to stay in the fog bank, so I'll stay right here. So blessing, option of moving, Option of, uh, option of giving a card, option of moving. The next thing that we do is explore. And we explore by turning over the top card of the location deck. Now, our ultimate objective is to find the villain and corner him. I ran a game yesterday where the very first card I turned over was the villain. If this happens, we'll have a video record of it. <laughs> is it the villain? No, it's Aww. not that game. Instead, shark. It's a shark. All right. This is a bane. It can hurt us. It's a henchman card, and in order to defeat it, there's a little check to defeat here because it's a bane. I gotta make a combat check and roll a nine or greater. You can see that the hammerhead shark can't be evaded, may not be evaded, and the difficulty of it will increase uh, if we're playing later adventures in the campaign. It's got another card, uh, some more words on there that I'll talk about later. Um, so I need to make a combat check to get a nine or better. So I'm gonna look on my card here and see do I have melee or ranged? Indeed I do. The fighter has melee, which is awfully convenient. And my melee is strength plus three. So I'm going to start off with a d10, and I add three to that. My odds are okay at this point, but I want to see if I've got any cards to improve my chances, and indeed I do. I've got a card here called the Falcata. For your combat check, reveal this card to use your strength or melee skill plus 2d4. You may additionally discard this card to add another 2d4. If you aren't proficient with weapons, the difficulty of this check is increased by 4. Oh, and also, if any d4 rolled on this check is a 4, count it as 5. It's really sharp. Nice. So, um, I'm going to use this card. I reveal it, which means I show it to you, and then put it back into my hand. I'm rolling a d10 plus 3. I get to add another 2d4. If I wanted to discard it, I could get another d 2d4 on top of that. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and do that because i got lots of weapons in my hand. So I've got a D10 plus 44 plus 3. My odds of getting a 9 are pretty good, but I want to show you one more thing. So this is a type of card called a Blessing card. Uh, it ha you'll see that it has uh, several different uh, powers on it. The second one here says, discard this card to add one die to any check. So if I was to discard this, te this, uh, this card, I would get one more die and I would be using the base die that I'm using for this roll. So I would get to add another strength die, which means I would have 2d10 plus 44 plus 3, which seems kind of, well, overkill. Yeah, I don't want to go uh, <laughs> overboard. So um, that's another pirate ship. Ah, uh, you're right. Uh, you're right. <laughs> you may notice that this says uh, any check. That means I, I don't only have to play it, I, I can play it on my turn, but I can also play it on your turn. I can use it to help you out. I can use it while it's your turn. Um, it doesn't have to be someone at my same location, it could be uh, anyone else in the game, which means blessings are really useful for us teaming up. Alright, so I'm going to hold on to this card because I think my odds are pretty good. If I manage to roll all ones, people on YouTube will really enjoy this. So, uh, six, eight, plus three is 11, and a 12, and a 14. Yes, I easily get this. I have defeated the Hammerhead Shark. Now, let's say if I didn't manage to roll a nine or higher, um, I would have failed, and at that point, I would have taken damage. The way that we figure damage is, we take the difference between the number that you need and the number that you rolled. So let's say if I rolled a seven, 9 minus 7 is 2, I would take 2 points of damage. And I would do that by discarding 2 cards from my hand. Thankfully I did not fail, I succeeded, so I'm going to read the last sentence here that I didn't read before. This says, if defeated, you may immediately attempt to close the location this henchman came from. It came right out of this deck, so this applies. So the nice thing about a henchman is, if you find them early in a deck, uh, you can try to close the location right away. Uh, otherwise, you've got to go through the whole location deck before you can try to close it. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to look over at this card again. What do I have to do to close it? It says, when closing, recharge your hand, which, much con which, yeah, which must contain at least one card. I think that's a bargain. I'm going to take these three cards. I'm going to recharge them, which means I put them face down under my deck. And we have successfully closed this card. Now, just to be sure... I'm going to look through this, the rest of this deck and see if the villain is here. I very much doubt that he's here because I built this correctly. These cards get banished. They go back to the box. We are one step closer to winning the game. Nice. The last thing that I do is draw back up to my hand size. One, four, and I'm going to play with that open hand. And you know it's a pirate game because i got a parrot now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that ends my turn. Now, when I run a demo, I give you guys the chance of either playing clockwise or counterclockwise, which means uh, you guys get to decide which of you goes next. Clockwise. You go ahead. Okay. All right. It is your turn. The first thing that we do is turn over the top card of the Blessing deck and point it at you. The next thing is you've got the option of giving a card to another character, which you don't need to do. Okay. Uh, then, you, then you have the option of moving. Uh, you could go to any of these... If you went over to this location right here, not much would happen to you, but it'd be a safe place to be. But I don't think you're going to run from trouble. Do you want to yeah. stay at the Lonely Island? I'll stay at the Lonely Island. All right. And now you get to explore. Turn over the top card. Merfolk. All right. Merfolk. Uh, this is another Bane. Merfolk, aquatic, basic. This has a check to defeat. You're doing a combat check. You're up against an eight. So the first thing that we're going to look for is... Do you have melee or ranged? And if you don't, it's going to default to your strength. <laughs> and Lem is not known for his prowess in combat, which means this is going to get no, kind of adventurous. No, we can't double team that card. There are ways that you can help out, but okay. the first thing that we do is figure out which okay. skill he's going to use. So you're using strength, which means you start out with a D4. And you're looking for a card that can help you, like a weapon or a spell. So then I could use so I could use this to discard this card to use my arcane skill plus 2d4. Yeah, instead of using strength, you get to use arcane. What is your arcane? It is a d10. D10. And plus? Uh, plus one. All right. And then you've got another 2d4 on top of that. Okay. So, so far, you've got d10 
plus 2d4 plus 1 against an 8. Now, you might have other cards that can help you, or someone else in hit might be able to help him out. You, so you, I could uh, play a card to... You would use one of your powers right now to help him out. You've got this thing where you can shuffle a card into your deck to give a, a d4 to any combat check. Okay, is that what this, when you play a weapon card that has a... Oh no, wait a minute. Yeah, you may shuffle a card from your hand into your deck to add one die four to any... Okay. Yep. The text of the card doesn't matter, although obviously there are some cards you might want to hold on to. Um, I'll take this one here. Okay, go ahead and shuffle it into your deck. So, um... Oh wait, you're at the same location. I have made a mistake. Okay. And there is documentation to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> you are not a, normally you would be able to do that. Um, if you have a blessing, you could throw that on to help him. Yeah, right here. Go ahead and discard it. You get another D10. Discard, discard to add one die to any check. Uh, yeah. But it says discard, discard to add two dice to any combat dexterity check. I don't know. He's not using dexterity, he's using arcane. All right. I'm so, just reading, I'm sorry. No I'm worries, like, take your time. Like, That's why you're here. Discarding it. Okay. So, so you've got... If I was worried, I could also play a blessing yes. myself. I think... Hopefully we should be good. You think you're good? Yeah, I think All so. All right, we'll let's see. roll the dice and see what happens. What are you going to beat on that, an eight? An eight. eight. Oh, eight. Oh, you got it. Eight. Yep. You've yeah. defeated the merfolk. Good job, man. Now, I was like, yeah, that's right. Since you're curious about this card, I'm going to give you another layer of rules here. Yeah, I saw that. If it matches that. Yes, so it says here at the end, after you play this card, if it matches the top card of the Blessings discard pile, recharge this card instead of discarding it. So it goes face down at the bottom of your deck instead of your discard but pile. But it doesn't match. But so it doesn't match. Yeah. There's also a card here called Blessing of the Gods, which I don't see out so Even far. I had it That earlier. says um, Maybe I saw it. you may treat it as uh, the text is the top card of the Blessings discard pile, which means you can play it as Blessing of the Gods, or you can play it as whatever this card is right here. So I'll hand this back to you. Yep, thank you. Um, one of the other things that you can do with a lot of these Blessings cards is, you'll see on that Blessing card over there, it says, uh, discard this card to explore your location. If you wanted to keep going and explore again, you could by discarding that card. So it's a little bit risky here because if you get in a fight, I don't know how much you have to fight with. Oh, now here it says, okay, after playing this yep, card... Yep, here's the next thing that happens. If you do not have the arcane skill, banish it, but I do. So then otherwise... Yes. You may succeed at a six, arcane six check, recharge this card. Okay. All right, good. so you've got arcane. Go ahead and give it a roll and see if you get over six. Um, five. Get a five. So close. So uh, if you had made the roll, you would recharge it. Otherwise, it goes into your discard. discard. Okay. All right. Um, do you want to go again, or do you want to stay where you are right now? And without a spell card, you can't uh, keep using like attack with the arcane unless it. Well, you wouldn't be able to cast another uh, attack spell if you didn't have one in your hand. Okay. Right. And now I think I'm good. Okay. So now it goes. I'm going to point this at. Ooh, it's me. All right. Um, you have the option of giving me a card. It's okay. I'm fine. Uh, you, have, you have the option of moving, which would be uh, pretty useful because there's not much to do here. Yes. You've got your choice of the coastline, the Lonely Island, the ironically named Lonely Island, where everyone would be hanging out if you were there, <laughs> or uh, Shark Island, which, as you know, is full of... There's no shark sharks. Island. Find a shark. I think I'm shark going to go over shark. to the coastline. All right, you're on the coastline. Now, I'm going to give you uh, a little bit more rules. One of the things I, that will come into play at this point is... This is a pirate game, so we have a ship. Wow. I'm gonna tell you how ships work real quick. So, one of the benefits of having a ship is, if you move during your move step, and there's another character at the same location, that character can move with you. That character can sail away with you onto the next adventure. Oh, sweet. Which is precisely what happened, which is the very reason why I said the thing that I am saying right now. So, I'm going to choose to, I'm gonna sail away with you so I can help, help you out. Excellent. All right. Um, if the ship gets damaged, the first time it takes damage, we flip it over like this, and the ship is wrecked. <laughs> if the ship is wrecked, we can't use that uh, wonderful movement ability anymore. Can you fix it? Yes. Uh, during the start of the move step, if the ship is wrecked, you can try to repair it. Uh, here's a check to repair. It requires a craft check of six, which is good news for Lem because... 
he's awfully crafty. He has the skills to fix it. If you don't have a skill that's listed on your character sheet, then your default is a D4. So okay. if you don't have craft listed, you've got a D4 to try to fix the ship. So rolling a six on a D4 is kind of hard without some help. So anyway, um, during your turn, your turn, you are the commander of the ship. And the ship is wherever you are. Um, there's also an ability that you get when you're commanding the ship. This says, when you would roll for plunder, you may discard a card from the Blessings deck to choose the type of plunder card instead. That's not going to come into play right now because plunder isn't something that happens until after a ship encounter. Um, okay. If you're encountering this as a, an opponent, as a Bane, uh, there's some text that fires off when encountering this ship. And it's got a check to defeat, just like any other Bane. Oh. So uh, we are going to sail away to the coastline on the ship. I said all that so I could move with you over to here. Yep. And now you're on the coastline. Uh, that was the move step. So the next thing is to explore. To explore. I'm going to read here. If you acquire a boon with the pirate or swashbuckling trait, you may immediately explore again. Good to know. Go ahead and turn over the top card. Let's see what we get. A hammerhead shark. More sharks. <laughs> These guys are everywhere. All right. So uh, may not be evaded. Uh, increased by the adventure deck number of the current scenario. It's a henchman, so if you defeat it, you've got a chance to close this location right away. And he's got the traits animal, aquatic, and veteran. You need a combat check against a nine. Okay, so... Do you have um, melee arranged? You do not, so do we're going to start off with strength. D6. Unless you've got a card that will allow you to use something else. I've got a cutlass, so I think I'm going to use a cutlass. All right. For a cutlass plus one. So I get a... For your combat check, reveal this card to use your strength or melee skill plus 1d6. So I get 2d6. Yeah. And I have a dolphin. <laughs> dolphin versus shark. That's crazy. All right, this says, bury this card to add 1d6 to any combat check to defeat a monster that has the aquatic trait. And I assure you that the hammerhead shark does indeed have the, the aquatic trait. Um, if you are on a ship, put this card on top of your deck instead of burying it. So go ahead and uh, put that card on top of your deck. We put that text in there in case uh, that dolphin manages to uh, swim into another card set or if you're doing one of the few scenarios in Skull and Shackles that doesn't have a ship in it. All right, so we're starting out where we proceeded to 3d6 plus one against a nine. How do, you, how do you feel about your odds here? Mid-range. Would you like me to play another blessing? Yeah, I would. Then I will do so and help you out. Thanks. Oh, and you know what? Because of that ship, you're at the same uh, location as Valoros. I've got a power that says, Add 1d4 to another character's combat check at your location. We're up to 46 plus 1d4 plus 1. Okay, I think I'm good. All right. Unless I'm cursed. So 8, 11, 13 plus 1 is 14. You've got it. You've defeated yes. the Hammerhead Shark. The last line on here is, if defeated, you may immediately attempt to close the location this henchman came from. So... When closing, succeed at a Wisdom or Perception 6 check, or banish a card that has the Pirate or Swashbuckling trait. Does it have to be out of his hand? It's got to be out of your hand, so you've got some choices here. Well, that see, Cutlass has yeah. Swashbuckling on it. You could do that to automatically succeed, or you could take your chances and roll against what do you have for... You've got a Wisdom of D8. You would need to um, roll a 6 or better on a D8. Nah, I'll just discard the compass. All right. You have successfully closed the coastline. By the way, it says here on the bottom, on closing each character this location may recharge a card that has the power to swashbuckling trait from her discard pile. Woo! Which works out pretty well for you. Yes. So it goes here or at the bottom? Uh, recharge goes to the bottom of your deck, face down. There we go. All right. So I'm going to set aside this shark that you have defeated. Oh, you know what? Before I forget. During this scenario, if you defeat a hammerhead shark henchman, <coughs> put it on the bottom of a random other open location. So I'm going to, let's see what we have open. 
the Lonely Island end. Does Shark Island need more sharks? One to three, four to six. I'm gonna put it on the bottom of the location deck for the Lonely Island. Okay. Uh, let me put that back over there. Now I'm gonna check through the rest of this just in case the villain is in here and I know that it isn't because I built this correctly. Okay. You may notice that even the uh, locations have flavor text on them. That's how flavorful this game is. I do love all the flavor that you guys add in there. It's pretty I, cool. I love story. I sometimes tell elaborate stories while I'm playing this game. <laughs> so, um, let's see. We have done shutting the coastline. That ends your turn. You now draw back up to your hand size. Okay. Five. And we proceed to Lirianne. I'm going to have to take one turn and go. My friends are waiting for me, I think. So okay. I uh, draw... I so this gets flipped over and points. I, or did you did it? That is it? correct. Okay. I've so done I have that. Blessing of the gods, mm -hmm. and then we just uh, flip Sport. over the encounter yep. deck there. Um, I'm going to do something since you're short on time yeah, to show you one more rule. No okay. problem. No problem at all. So um, one of the things that you should know is when you encounter the villain, um, if there's another character at another open location, one of the things that makes this game a bit easier is that character can attempt to temporarily close that location, which means. If, say, Lem encountered the villain over here, and you were over here, uh -huh. you would have a chance to temporarily close this location for the rest of the turn to keep the villain from fleeing right. away. It could make the difference between us winning in about two minutes and us winning in about more than ten minutes. Yeah, I'm sorry so, I have to go. No, no worries. Would you like to uh, sail over to Shark Island? Sure. All right. Uh, this says, at the start of your turn, someone encounter a hammerhead shark. It's not the start of your turn because you just moved. Let's see if this is the villain. Enemy ship. I am going to summon a random ship, and it's going to be the true win. Okay. You're going to be using uh, intelligence or knowledge eight, or wisdom or survival six. I have a okay. Sorry. <clears throat> wisdom or survival of six. So I have a wisdom of twelve. So I think that's probably, and then that sounds pretty good. That's probably the way I'm gonna go. I'll be with you in just a minute. Recharge this card to give a D4. Oh, he's gonna give you a D4 on top of that. All right, man. Thank you. No <laughs> All right, so here we go. So I have to get a six or better, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, are you oh. kidding me? <laughs> Is there any way to force a reroll or anything? In this game? There are very few cards that can kick you up by one after you've rolled. You have to choose what, what you're using to modify the roll before you roll it. Oh, so, man. you have just wrecked our ship. Yay. <laughs> That's okay, because Lem will be Thanks coming up lot. soon. Yeah, I know. I'm out of here anyway. <laughs> By the way, I'm going to say uh, something I should have said earlier. When you win in a ship encounter, uh -huh. um, your party gets plunder. Because oh, you're cool. pirates. Um, in the full version of the game, we roll on the plunder table. Uh, we get a card type. And then we draw a random card of that type from the box. Because this is a demo, I would do a slightly shorter version of that where I've got a card of each type. We would choose one. We've got a Fire Lance here. And we would stash it under the ship. Okay. It would stay there for the rest of the scenario. So at the end of the scenario, when we rebuild our, our decks, uh, as I described earlier, um, this card would be in the pool of cards that we could use to rebuild our decks. Anyone could use this card. Cool. So. If we had won, that would happen, but we did not, yeah, so I blew it. it is wrecked. However, I would like to thank you for playing this game. I really All right, it. so that was Jarrell did not defeat the enemy ship, which means this card gets shuffled back into the deck. All right, we're coming into the home stretch. Sailing back into port, here we go. So uh, that is Lurian, who would then draw back up to her hand size of four. And which means it goes over to Valoros. Turn over the top card and turn it at me. Blessing of a Rastal. Um, I am going to go over to the Lonely Island. I'm going to turn over the top card, and here is the villain. Here's how this works. Uh, the Adara Barbarian may not be evaded. All damage from the Adara Barbarian is poison damage. Uh, to defeat him, I need a combat check. 
15 or higher. Now, um, before I encounter the barbarian, as I said earlier, um, every character at another, each character at another open location has a chance to temporarily close that location. Okay. We're going to Shark Island. Here's what happens. Lyra and his here at Shark Island, and it says, when closing, summon and defeat the henchman, Hammerhead Shark. Time for another shark fight. It's Shark Week. All right. <laughs> so we've got... Lyrian is going to use her range skill, dexterity plus three. She's going to use her musket, which is going to give her... She's got a d8 for her dexterity. So she's got a d10 for her musket. Plus she's got plus three. Uh, additionally, bury this card. Let's get another d10. And at this point, you would bury the card. At this point, bury it wouldn't go underneath the mat. Uh, I've got the... So on the mat, you've got a spot for the character card right there, and a spot for bearing the card right there. I've got some more text here at the end that I'm going to read. Um, if you did not bury this card, roll 1d6, or 1d12 if you're proficient with weapons. I did indeed bury this card, so... All right. Um, D8 plus 2D10 plus 3 against a 9. Do we feel a need to throw something on top of that? Like a Blessing of the Gods or a Blast Stone or anything? Why not? There you go. Okay, or should we save that for the fight with the Adaro Barbarian? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what do you got to get a 9? I have cards to give you when we fight. When we fight them. Okay, let's go ahead and put the Blast Stone on that if, you, if that would be okay. You, you're not at the my. She's at a different location though, right? Uh, different location, yes. But does it say same location? By your character. Oh, excuse me. My mistake. I've made a mistake. Okay, I'm just going to do this. And I'm going to easily get a 9, which means Lyrian has defeated the shark, and we temporarily close the location. So, here we are. It's Valoros versus Ataro Barbarian. He's got a D10 for his melee, and a plus 3. Uh, he's going to use his boarding axe. That'll give him another d6. Uh, another d6. If it has the pirate trick, it does not. You may additionally discard this card to add another d4. I'm going to do that. Anyone want to throw in a blessing? I do. Here is another d10. This one, yeah. Here's another d10. Um, I'm going to throw a blast stone at that for d4. Then we can recharge. For the power. Uh, yeah, you do the recharge yeah, to yeah, give him another D4 for being at the same location at Len. And then recharge is with the bottom of the deck? Uh, face up on the bottom of the deck. Oh, I mean, up. face down on the bottom of the deck, excuse me. 3D10 plus D6 plus 3D4 plus 3 against a 15. If I make this roll, we win the game. If I don't make this roll, everyone on YouTube laughs outrageously as I roll <laughs> all ones on this. And here we go. 9, 10, and 19. 21, 25, 28, 33, 36. <laughs> I think we have just won Skull and Shackles. And that is how you play the Pathfinder adventure card game. Huzzah! Huzzah! Hey. I right, thank have you. some promo cards for you.